If someone would like to become a sannyasi, what is to be done? Well, on a purely logistic level, sansari means, by the way, someone living in the world. The world is the sansari. So sansari is used to refer to someone living in the world, um, typically meaning someone married, kids, family, job, the whole sort of worldly life, wanting to become sannyas, meaning a renunciant, meaning someone away from those things. So on a logistic level, because sannyas is an official order, I mean, it's an official initiation, when you take take the clothes, the saffron clothes of the sannyas, it's, it's a whole initiation process. You get ordained into an order. So on a logistic level, you literally wrap up, move away from that and into this. The first part, of course, which is a requirement, is to have a guru who can initiate you into sannyas. Because when you take sannyas, you take sannyas from the guru. You can, in your mind, renounce. But if you really are talking about taking sannyas, that's an official initiation process that you get from a guru. So the logistics are you move away from that, from things of the sansadi world, under the guru's guidance, with the guru's blessings, you move into the renunciation. But here's the other piece. That's the logistics. That's, that's the body, that's the, I've gone from this house, this relationship, this city, those clothes into this ashram in that place and these clothes. There's also a mind that goes. And the mind is just as much sansadi or sannyas as the body. It's not just the body that works. It's not just the body that's in relationship. It's not just the body that's earning and acquiring money and competing, and it's the mind. And so, just as important, and perhaps even more important, than the logistics of physically moving the body from one place to another, from one world to another, is also the change in the mind. Because simply wearing saffron does not change all of the mind. Puja Swamiji speaks a lot about saints and sages living in, cage, in caves in the jungle who are thinking about the world. So simply live, not all of them, of course, but the simple act of the cave, the simple act of moving away, the simple act of wearing orange or throwing away your clothes altogether does not in and of itself pull the mind out of that world. And that's what's really important and that's also why the guru is so important because the, under the guru's guidance and blessings, the mind pulls away. And so it's not that you're living in an ashram, being celibate, wearing saffron, but thinking of the family or the kids or the money or the sex or the whatnot, but that the mind is there as well. You want to make sure that when the body comes from one world to another, that the mind comes along with it. And they're, they're journeys that go together, but they both have to have attention paid to.